The Bible prophesies that in the end times Christianity will come under increasing persecution. That prophecy is being fulfilled today. All across the world millions of Christians are being verbally abused, physically harassed, and yes, even murdered for their faith. But these attacks, as terrible as they may be, are not the greatest threat to the church. The greatest threat comes from within the church in the form of apostasy. Stay tuned as we talk with one of Christendom's foremost authorities about the raging spiritual apostasy that exists in the church today. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Ray. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Once again this week, for the third week in a row, we have as our special guest a wonderful lady named Carol Matriciana, who is considered to be one of Christendom's foremost experts on Eastern religions, contemporary cults, and Christian apostasy. Carol is a documentary film producer from California. Over the past 30 years, she has produced over 60 videos concerning false religions, cults, and apostasy. Carol, welcome back. Well, thank you. It sounds like you've been awfully busy. That's an average of two a year. (laughs) (laughs) And I started so young. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my. (laughs) Okay. Well, also here in the studio with me to help me interview Carol is our web minister, Nathan Jones. Nathan is involved in battling apostasy on a daily basis as he talks back and forth via our website with people literally all over the world concerning both Bible prophecy and the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Nathan, how about kicking off our discussion? I'd be delighted to. Thanks, Dave. And I'm delighted to have you back. You're a great guest. Thank you so much, Nathan. Let's start our discussion with talking about the health of evangelical Christianity today. And even the word evangelical. I, I know when I was little and growing up, the word evangelical meant you went to the Bible for your faith, what was truth and all that. But the word evangelical seems to be losing its meaning in this day and age. Would you agree? Absolutely, because we're in what is called a postmodern era, postmodern culture. Now, the postmodern philosophy teaches that there are no absolute truths. So, the original evangelical, traditional evangelical, thought that the Bible was the inerrant word of God, that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But now the postmodern is teaching that truth actually isn't knowable. Now, this is an Eastern worldview. You see, in Eastern mysticism, truth is all embracing. Truth is, uh, your truth is good for you, it's my truth is good for me. And in order for the two of us to unite, we must dialogue and converse. Well, we know what happened in the Bible with the first conversation. The first conversation was with the serpent, Mm -hmm. with Eve. She was sinless, without sin, pure, made in the image of God. And he came and tempted her with a desire, which is extraordinary, that she could be kind of more like God, but she was without sin. So what's been happening within Christendom is that we can supposedly become more like God through Eastern mysticism. Satan used Eve's reason, her imagination, the fruit looked like it was good to eat. And so all of these concepts of dialogue and conversation have come in where we're talking with each other's opinions. Well, opinions are nothing, it's God's opinion. If God says that evil is evil and good is good, then that should be our evangelical Bible-believing standard. So we've given up then the Bible as our source of truth and turned to ourselves as the source of truth? Um, as conversation, as dialogue. It's called consensus. consensus. You, 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 um, you bring in the concept of, uh, of a, a crisis situation, you, you dialogue about it and you meet in the middle. So it's a sort of synthesis. You bring in a, an, the idea of, uh, well, let's all get together and try and solve this solution. Well, if you're with a Muslim or a Hindu and a Christian and you're all trying to dialogue about sin, there is no meeting place hmm. if you're going to stand on biblical truth. So in order for us to bring in what the Bible says is going to happen in the last days, which is a one world religion, we've got to be able to merge all our ideas so that Jesus is no longer the deity that the Bible says Jesus is. And we can become the deity. In other words, we can define our own truths. 
And a Muslim can define his Allah as being the same as, uh, let's say, a Bible, the, what the Bible describes as God, which are not the same. The Muslim's God is the moon God. You see the crescent on top of every mosque because they worship the moon well, God. I, I want to get back to the emergent church movement, though. Yeah. Um, the emergent church movement seems to me to be one of the most dangerous movements in America today because the leaders of it claim to be evangelical. They have, using that claim, been able to infiltrate evangelical seminaries, evangelical churches. I see them showing up at the most conservative denominations in America, uh, making their presentations, and yet these are people who deny absolute truth. And uh, it, it's just, you know, the Bible has absolute truth. They say it does not. They, they, they deny that. And everything gets into touchy-feely. One of the things that they're doing is uh, getting back to, uh, for example, I know of a major evangelical church where the pastor came in and said, okay, from now on we're going to have card tables in the lobby. On each card table is going to be a Greek icon. And there's going to be instructions about how you can kneel and pray to the icon. Mm -hmm. well, now, this is evangelical the, church. Absolutely. That's the idea of ecumenical uh, discussion, conversation with those that perhaps don't believe in your same faith, whether they're those of other religions or that claim to be Christians. How can we bring all Christian denominations together? And a lot of it seems to be getting back to the touchy feely stuff that was characteristic, say, of the Roman Catholic Church in the Middle Ages. It's the idea of you've got to have incense and you've got to have uh, 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 you know, things of that nature, candles and so forth. That this will all draw you into a deeper relationship with God. It becomes very very uh, mystical. Mystical, that's the word. <laughs> well, it's this new spirituality which is through mysticism. You see, when you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, there's that vacuum in you and you want to have a mystical experience. We are made to have a relationship. So you have a relationship with the wrong, the lying spirits, doctrines of demons. And how can we know that? You have to know the Bible in order to test the spirits which we're told to do in the scriptures. But if you don't have the living sword, the two-edged sword, yeah. the testing ability, then the experience that I feel is my experience and it feels like a good experience and it is a spiritual experience. And I know, having come from the New Age, that it's very powerful, it's very real, and it appears to be truthful. And the you leader. Need to slap a bumper sticker that says coexist on your <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. The, the, the leader, the recognized leader of the emergent church movement uh, recently uh, appeared at a, a very conservative college here in Texas. I wrote the president of that college and I said, hey, this is a guy. I, I gave him two pages of quotes. Homosexuality, what difference does it make? That's his attitude. Uh, absolute truth, no, there's no such thing. Uh, he went on and on. I gave quote after quote after quote. And uh, I said, you're going to have this man speak to your people? This is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He wrote back and he said, well, I don't really know anything about him. The, the chairman of our Bible department arranged this. I'll have him write to you. The chairman of the Bible department wrote to him and said, well, I'm sure you've probably taken all these quotes out of context because I met him and he's such a nice person. Well, there you nice go, guy. you see. He's I've, such I've, a nice I've person. I've met him and he's a nice guy. That's a, a deluding spirit. <laughs> see, we cannot, it's not who we speak to. To, uh, it's not an emotional level. The Bible tells us to test the spirit. We have got to test on a spiritual level, not emotional. So what's happening with the new emergent church is it's plugging into emotions, subjectivity. It's a feel-good faith. It's um, the don't d d truth is judgmental. Don't be so judgmental. Absolutely, Tolerate. absolutely. It's the ultimate well, that's the, the ecumenical. Now, right? That's the idea of embracing all religions, mm -hmm. and you've got to have the breakdown of all denominations in Christianity in order to bring in the new one world religion. People say to me, well, you, you really must be exaggerating what these people say. Well, at first they were really subtle, but now in recent years I've noticed they have become very open. For example, here's a quote from one of the leaders of the movement. My goal is to destroy Christianity as a world religion and be a recatalyst for the movement of Jesus Christ. A recatalyst for a the re movement? A recatalyst. For the movement of Jesus Christ? Yes. What, what is that? What, which Nobody Jesus? knows what that means. That's yeah. mumbo jumbo. Well, the problem is, <laughs> you remember talk. that Jesus said in Matthew 24, four times he says there's going to be religious deception in the last days. Oh, there's absolutely. There's going to be false teachers in the last days. False teachings. Beware, they're going to come in the name of Christ. They're going to come in my name, he said. His name is Christianity. Here is a false Jesus Christ. So, the Antichrist, why is he called Antichrist? Like Jesus. Yes. So we have got to 
recondition the minds of everybody to think that this new Christ consciousness, this new Jesus Christ, is going to be something that we can all embrace, whether you're Muslim, Hindu, whatever it is. And the big peace plan of a leading evangelical movement teacher today is about bringing in global Christianity, global peace plan, global ecumenical ideas. So what you're saying is that this emergent church movement is really just part of many different movements that exist that are de designed to prepare the way for the one world religion of the Absolutely. Antichrist. Absolutely. And they're going, it's, it's the ecumenical idea of going into every denomination, whether it's Episcopalian, Protestant, uh, Reformed theology, whatever it is, it is that we all must come to a census, a consensus of a new Jesus Christ a new Christ consciousness. Welcome back to our interview of Carol Matriciana, one of Christendom's most respected experts on Eastern religions, contemporary cults, and Christian apostasy. We've been talking with her about apostasy in the church today, and we want to focus now on what's called the emergent church movement. Carol, can you define that for us, the emergent church movement? What does that mean? It's a difficult word. Because think about emerging. emerging. I mean, yeah. how do you define emerging? It hasn't come yet. We don't know where, what where it's, it's going, going to turn into because it's emerging. And it's a very, very, very clever, incredible label for a movement that is actually going to be emerging into the one world relation, one world religion that is going to usher in the Antichrist. So that's what it's emerging to. It's emerging to new truths. It's emerging into a new Christ. It's emerging into new concepts so that you don't, un you don't need to understand truth. Well, basically, aren't they saying that Christianity needs to be reconstructed? Reformed, reinvented, redesigned, because it isn't... Just throw the Bible out then. Well, it sounds good, because in actual fact, they want to try and reach out to the postmodern culture. And they say Very that much. traditional Bible-believing Christians don't do that. Well, it, what it's actually, if you look at the back of that concept, the back of that concept is saying that God didn't know that we were going to be a postmodern generation <laughs> right now, and God didn't anticipate that men were going to become such wretched sinners, and so God gave up because he he didn't <laughs> really. He didn't, and they found well, that out how. Well, <laughs> that's what it. If if you think it through logically, that's what oh, it's it's out of their saying own heads, then. because it's yeah. saying that God didn't design the Bible to to. Um, converse to attract today's generation. Well, no, what's happening is today's generation is so pulling away from truth. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Word is what we've got to come back to. We've got to realize that we're sinners. We've got to come back to the center. But another concept we've got to realize is that within Eastern mysticism and Hinduism, it's based on the idea of evolution. See, there are, there are two opposing worldviews. One is that God created, which is creation, and one is that the world evolved. And there is evolving truth. There is evolving um, religianity. There is re re evolving. So that is where the emerging comes in based on the foundation of evolution. It seems to me like that the emergent church movement simply does not understand the power of the Word of God. They feel like that we have to uh, change the gospel, uh, present it in a whole different way uh, in order to uh, relate to the modern generation. But the gospel is supernatural in its power, just as you were converted just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this can happen to a person in the postmodern generation if they're confronted with their sin. If they're confronted with the Word. And, See, and with the I Word. I got yeah. given the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. If I hadn't have been given the gospel, I couldn't have got saved. The gospel is that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And that's what was given to me in those few minutes that, may, that opened my eyes. It's the power of the Word that opens the eyes. Now, Satan knows this. Satan came to Eve in, in Genesis 3 and said, surely God hasn't said. He immediately attacked the authority of the Word. And so it hasn't, it's no different. You know, I, I've become more and more convinced that the people involved in the emergent church movement are moving in the direction of the old liberal mainstream Christianity of saying really what it's all about is environmentalism, it's the protection of nature, it's protection of, of Mother Earth, and, and uh, we're going to bring peace to the whole world. And all. Let me read you a statement it's by a the leader. Gospel. The leader of the movement. Here's a statement. The church has been preoccupied with the question, what happens to your soul after you die? 
as if the reason for Jesus' coming can be summed up in Jesus is trying to help get more souls into heaven as opposed to hell after they die. I just think a fair reading of the gospel blows that out of the water. I don't think the entire message and life of Jesus can be boiled down to that bottom line of saving souls. How sad, how awful, because Jesus said that He comes that none should mm -hmm. perish. He came to to give us eternal life so that none should perish. And that was the whole purpose. This Jesus same fellow held a conference in Seattle, which your friend Eric Barger, who our viewers know well, attended. And he said, we've interpreted John 3.16 incorrectly. It has nothing to do with salvation of souls. It has to do with salvation of the world. Jesus came to die for the world. And He invited people to come up afterwards and put their hands in dirt and commit themselves to saving the environment. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, within Eastern mysticism, the world is Mother Goddess. The environment is who should be worshipped. It's the matriarchal system, not the patriarchal. If we have to go even further back to Satan, this is demonic, this is satanic. And we have to understand that just as there is a personal God, there is a personal enemy of God, and that is Satan. And his attack has been on the Word of God, the authority of God, the purpose of Jesus, because he said to Eve in the garden, surely you won't die. If you follow me, you won't die. If you follow me, you'll get wisdom. If you follow me, you can be like God. All of these are the fundamentals of the, even, of the emerging church movement. Would you say the movement then isn't a particular denomination? Oh. No. So it all penetrates into everywhere. all denominations. Okay. The people that are the leaders of the emerging movement claim that they came from evangelical backgrounds. Now, they may have come from evangelical church backgrounds, but they didn't understand the authority of the Word of God because they have, were raised in a postmodern generation, the idea that truth is relative, truth is not knowable, truth we need to debate it, we need to get into uh, a sort of a uh, protagonist uh, situation where we can debate and create, uh, we get a thesis, we get a, the opposite <laughs> of a thesis, and we combine it Human with a wisdom. synthesis, mm -hmm. and it's all about wisdom. Well, Human that wisdom. reminds me of the fact that the leader of the Emergent Church movement was invited recently to come to Dallas to speak to one of the most outstanding evangelical seminaries in all the world, right here in Dallas, Texas. And the president of the seminary was confronted by people who said, what are you doing? Why are you inviting this person in who's a wolf in sheep's clothing? Well, you have to understand, he said, we're an educational institution. We have to be open to all ideas and all people can come in and speak. And they said, well then, if you're going to invite a false per, uh, a, per, a person teaching a false gospel, at least have a faculty member get up and be given equal time to confront him. No, that wouldn't be polite. Right. Polite. Well, you see, I came from, uh, well, how did I get involved in the New Age? Because I was given a plethora <laughs> of beliefs, and because this world is controlled by Satan, Satan is the god of this world, I was under seduction and seducing sure. spirits and doctrines of demons. So, if, if one doesn't understand the reality of Satan's warfare in this, we don't understand the war we're involved in. But, I mean, look, recently we've had America's pastor named by Time magazine who invited three New Age, completely Eastern, indoctrinated, mystical doctors into his health plan to uh, introduce his entire congregation of 22,000 people to a new health and wellness plan. Now, these three doctors between themselves had an Eastern worldview. Even though one is a Muslim, one is a Jew, one is a, a Christian mystic, they come from an Eastern worldview background that within ourselves is a potential that we can heal ourselves. And that is the idea of Eastern mysticism, that within us we can connect to divinity, we can heal ourselves, it's mind over matter, yes. it's hypnosis, self-hypnosis. So this is what the emerging church is all about. New ideas that have come from the East, they're not new ideas, they're old ideas. It's the old lie from the Garden of Eden. And look at the, look at the society they produced in the East. Look at that society yeah. to Good see point. that it is not a, a nurturing, in fact it's a very cruel system. One of the words I hear over and over in the emergent church uh, leaders is the word contemplative. They're really heavy on that. Let me read you a quote here from one of their leaders. The fact is that contemplative spiritual spirituality will play a huge part in the church of the future. And I want to assure you that candles are just the beginning. 
Why? Because we're changing the names. If they said Eastern mysticism is going to play a huge part in the new church, we wouldn't buy it. But when you say contemplate, that sounds better. And they intercut contemplate with meditate. But in Eastern mysticism, the contemplation and the meditation is in the snake within you, the idea that you can become one with everything. So that contemplative idea, which, by the way, is also deeply rooted in the Desert Fathers, which is part of Roman Catholicism, the mystical idea of connecting through silence, which is opposed to the Bible. We don't connect to God through silence, but mm. that, is the part, that is part of centering prayer, contemplative spirituality, uh, that you go into a silence, you practice the presence. Well, all of these are emotional feelings. They're based on subjectivity. It's based on relative truth. Your experience is as good as my experience. What they don't understand that Satan is called an angel of light and the demon of darkness, that dragon, who is out to deceive the whole world. His job is deception, and he's going to come in as an angel of light. In fact, that same scripture, 2 Corinthians 11, says, no wonder his ministers appear as yes. ministers of righteousness. Yes. yes, subjectivity always leads to an openness to deception. It's like people who tell me, God told me this or God told me that, and they'll tell me something that's totally off the wall, as if they think that every thought that goes through our fallen minds comes from God. Mm -hmm. And even if they had a thought from God, it might be completely uh, convoluted by the time it goes through our fallen minds. We need to test everything by the Word of God. We have to. It's, it's a, the, the blindness of it is like taking a sailor out into the middle of the ocean, and he'll just go wherever the boat and the currents take him to. You know, a sailor, it, it, he has to have a compass. He has to have a direction. Even at night, if he doesn't have a compass or direction, he's got the stars. Those are based on objective truth and reality. Right, right. We have to have our guidebook, the, the, the manual that God has given us to test his character against the character of Satan, his well-being, his mercy, his grace, a personal relationship with him as opposed to our subjective feelings. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy and our discussion with Carol Matriciana about the emergent church movement. Carol, what are some of the red flags, warning signs that people should watch for that might indicate that their church is suddenly moving in the direction of the emergent church movement? I would say it's the way that the, the church teaches the Word of God. There are two different types of teaching. There's a thematic way of teaching, which is based on topics. Mm -hmm. And if you do that topical teaching, which a lot of emergent churches are doing, then, then they're able to pull in order to bring their topic, to persuade their topic to go along their line of thought. They can maybe pull one or two Bible well, verses. Well, they can always find there. a verse. <laughs> and they can pull from Gandhi's writings and William Shakespeare's writing and Churchill's writings to support the view. They can also take it as in uh, uh, The Purpose Driven Life, which has taken 15 different Bible versions. Not all of those are even translations. Well, you fish around and you find one that says what you want it to say. Or half of us that yeah. says what you want it to say. Mm. So, I think that's the danger of thematic teaching, whereas the other type of teaching, which is based on ex on expository teaching, on line by line, verse by verse, actually based on what does God say about this? What is God's opinion based on the Word of God in the full counsel of God? And you'll find that a lot of churches, if they're not teaching the Word of God in the fullness of the context, I'm sorry to say that they would be open to bringing in authors, books, ideas, Eastern mystical ideas, changing the words so that it can go from meditation to contemplation or from yoga to Christian yoga and all this kind of thing. The sad know? fact of the matter is that the church has ignored the word for so long, for years now, that the average Christian going to church faithfully every Sunday knows very little of the Word. And you cannot guard yourself against deception if you do not know the Word. I, I remember the impact of that book, The Shack, and uh, it's about as uh, unchristian as it could be in what it's teaching, and yet people thought it was wonderful and preachers were advocating people go out and read it. Well, look at Harry Potter. When I made my documentary on Harry Potter, I had more Christians come to me saying, what are you doing with our hero? <laughs> with our hero? <laughs> it's a 13-year-old witch. 
Grinch that, that the author of Harry Potter said that it would take seven years to make a wizard. And Harry is 11 in one book, 12 in the next, 30, etc. Seven years later, the perfect wizard is made. And the hundreds and thousands of children reading mm -hmm. those books are then indoctrinated with another worldview. Well, speaking of your video on that, I know that you have uh, produced a great number of videos on fascinating topics like Harry Potter and yoga and the emergent church movement. How about telling our viewers how to get in touch with you? Uh, with you and your website. Well, thank you. They just need to go on to www.caryl, I spell my name in a different way, C A R Y L tv.com seven letters c-a-r-y-l-t-v <laughs> dot com letters, dot com thank okay, you okay great nathan how about telling people about our website well, we have eight letters in our name <laughs> lamblion.com and we have all sorts of articles on topics like the immersion church we have the, these tv shows you can watch them again and again we have a newsletter it comes out every other week it's free subscribe to it we'll send you the lamplighter magazine as well we have a blog if you need a daily dose of bible prophecy a facebook group you can join and discuss with four thousand other people bible prophecy come to lamblion.com eight letters wow in fact uh, you have the uh, we'll have on posted there the television programs that she made before this one so that uh, the first one was about the escape from hinduism and the second one was about yoga so they can go to the website and view those programs on the website correct Correct. Click multimedia and then television. All our programs are listed right there. Carol, do you have any final word you'd like to say to someone out there who is struggling right now with trying to figure out whether, you know, find, trying to find a church? What, what should they look for in trying to find a church? Oh, I get so many letters from people saying that our church is going emergent. We've read this, we've read that. Well, you know, don't be discouraged because we're told in the last days this is what's going to happen. There is going to be a falling away from truth. Great that you've discerned it. There's also another thing that says in the last days they will come from within us. So, we know that the teachers and the false prophets are coming from the church. That's good that they're recognizing that. I would suggest um, meeting, starting up, being with a group of people that teach line on line, verse by verse, yeah. teaching of the Bible. Get back to the Word of God. Well, this is a non-denominational ministry and I go to all kinds of churches. And one of the things I found out early on is you can never church, uh, judge a church by the signboard outside. I've been to Methodist churches that were on fire for God and I've been to Methodist churches that were dead as a doornail. Same true of Baptist churches and whatever. Mm -hmm. The key is what is happening in that pulpit. Is that preacher preaching from the Word of God and is he lifting up Jesus as the only hope for the world? If that's not happening, if he's up there teaching pop psychology or whatever, get out of there, look for somebody who's right. preaching the world word and focusing on Jesus Christ. And encouraging us to be strong in the Word so go. that we can go out and give the message and make disciples of all nations. Well, Carol, you've been a great blessing to us. Thanks again for being with us. Folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you. It sure has been to me. As we say in Texas, I got my socks blessed off. I hope you'll be back with us next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Want to know more about the dangerous heresy of the emergent church movement? Order Carol Matriciana's comprehensive eye-opening DVD, Wide is the Gate, by going to caroltv.com. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministry, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.